Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up. In December, I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books, which is pretty good for me. I can usually read about six books in a, in a month, um, but this was just like an extra good month, I guess. Um, I read one two star, one 3.5 star, three four stars, and two five stars, which I think is pretty good. I actually read 15 graphic novels in the month of December at the beginning. Um, but I'm not going to talk about them here because I already did a wrap-up of all of those. And I will link it here, up here. Um, and you can check it out if you want to. The first book I'm going to start with is the lowest rated book that I had that in December. And that is Becoming Abigail by Chris Avani. This is a novella about um, a girl named Abigail whose mother dies in childbirth with her and sort of her identity crisis of whether she's more like her mother and her father's pressure on her to be more like her mother. And then when she gets trafficked to London and sort of the trauma that she experiences there. Um, I really did not like this book. I had a couple problems with it. First of all, it's overly dramatic, I guess. And as an aside, I was watching Kat from Paperback Dreams read her reading vlog of A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. And in that, she does say it's like torture porn, and but also that you can have multiple traumas in your life. And that was my problem with this, was that I do believe you can have multiple traumas in your life, but this was just only the trauma like it wanted to it was it was like taking the trauma in a way to shock you and i don't like that in books i don't like being emotionally manipulated and i feel like it like this book was trying to emotionally manipulate me and make it dark and just only focus on the trauma and i really don't like that i don't enjoy that how about this book was that the character had no agency and it's something that i think that some male writers will write female characters like in that she was kind of just a canvas for everyone to spit on and she had no reaction to it just things just happened to her and she had barely had any reaction to it and i don't like characters like that i think they're they're just cardboard cutouts and that's really what she felt like my third problem with this book was that there is a relationship between Abigail, who's like 14, and her um, social worker, who was like in his, from his 30s to his 50s in that range, and it's not, it's, instead of being called out as taking advantage of a minor and as statutory rape, it was presented as the only meaningful sexual relationship she's had when she's been sexually abused in the past. And I just thought it was gross. I just think that's gross. Um, I, I don't have any other things to say besides that. That's just freaking gross. Like, if you're going to write a character who's been sexually abused and then have them be sexually abused again, but have that be their sexual revolution, like, that's just... Ugh. Like, that's gross. Stop. But this book is beautifully written. Um, Chris Abani is a Nigerian poet and novelist, and it's it's obvious that he, why people, like, like this book. Like, it's gorgeous, the writing, but there were so many things wrong with it that I just could not support and did not enjoy, and so that's why I gave this book two stars. I read with the Shakespeare Book Club, Twelfth Night, by William Shakespeare. Um, this is about Viola and Sebastian, who get into a shipwreck, and they, well, they wash up in different places. Viola thinks Sebastian's dead, and Sebastian thinks Viola is dead. 
So Viola dresses up as a boy and gets into this this Count Orsino's household as his servant, and she's basically tasked with trying to get this Lady Olivia to fall in love with Count Orsino. Um, I it's it's very convoluted, and like it's a comedy of it's a comedy, and I thought it was funny at some point. I really did. I can tell, you know, Shakespeare was a funny guy. Um, and it was just, it was fun to watch it play out. Um, it's obviously not my favorite classic I've ever read. Um, a lot of the language is inaccessible, but thankfully I had the, um, Folger Shakespeare Library Edition, which has, like, an explanation of the words on one side of the page so that you can kind of decipher what's happening. I just am not, I've always said I didn't like Shakespeare just because of it's Middle English and you can, as a contemporary reader, Middle English is pretty much inaccessible to me because words mean different things or the words are completely out of use now and I can't understand them. But I did enjoy, it was kind of like a puzzle trying to piece together what was being said and I could kind of just understand it even without that. I got the, the general plot of the story. It was good. That's that's why I gave it 3.5 stars. It was good, but I didn't love it. Um, I have a feeling that there are more Shakespeare plays that I will probably like a lot more. Like I'm thinking about Macbeth will probably be one that I really enjoy. This just was not my favorite, but I did like it. So that's why I gave it 3.5 stars. Next, I read Three Sisters in Black by Norman J. Gerald. This is about, it's a true crime book um, that I just found on Hoopla while I was scrolling for an ebook, and it's about the death of O.C. Sneed and the strange circumstances surrounding that and the three women in black who are related to her who kind of covered up her death or like had a hand in her death. It's a mystery, so you don't really know what's going on, and it's it's very good. It's, um, there's a lot of information. If you don't like info dumps, you probably won't like this book, but it was written in the 60s, and I couldn't even tell. Like, it was just so, so good, like, so well written, so much intrigue, and it was, there was a, the, the last third of the book is hilarious. Like, there is, there's a trial, and there is court like, what's that called? Court records of what's been said. And one of the women in black is like totally off her rocker and just reading what she's saying while this trial is going on is hilarious. Like, I was laughing at work while I was reading this. Um, I would recommend it to people who like true crime. Um, just not people who like info dumpy stuff, so... That's why I gave it four stars. Next, I read A Town Called Noel by M.K. Hardy. So this is a little Christmas novella romance between two women. One, her name is... Fuck, what's her name? I forget their names. One, one's named Brooke. I think one might be named Holly. I, I'm, I'm blanking, but... Um, Brooke is in town to deal with her mother's last of effects, her will, and all of the property that she left behind. And Holly has a bakery, and she is one of the properties that Brooke's mother um, had. And Brooke wants to sell everything off, so that puts Holly's bakery in danger. And it's just, it's a really sweet, cute Christmas story. Like, I really enjoyed it and it just put me in like such a good mood um and I wish it was longer like that was that's my mo one of my only complaints was that I wish it was longer because I didn't get a feel for the the chemistry between the two of them like not as much as what I wanted so that's why I get four stars but I'm definitely gonna check out more from MK Hardy they're apparently a two women writing team who are also married to each other which we love to see it 
Um, and I'm just gonna get whatever they write, just because they were, it was so good. So that's why I gave it four stars. I read The Afterlife, excuse me, The Afterlife of Holly Chase, it's upside down, my god. The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Han. I have a review of this, kind of, along with A Christmas Carol, which I'm going to talk about next. And I'm going to link it in the, in the card. Um, this I enjoyed. I had a couple problems with it. Like, the romance was boring. And the, the writing, like, the character voice could, was kind of indistinguishable. But it was a really, really nice Christmas story about realizing that people are important even if they don't seem like it to you and that just everyone's life is worth something and that we should value the relationships in our lives more than money and fame and it was just really nice um i probably will do a reread of this next christmas just because it put me in a good christmasy mood um, so I recommend it for Christmassy time for people who like Christmassy books during Christmassy time. And then I read um, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I read an illustrated edition by TJ Hardy, I believe his name is. And it was it was so good. Like I don't think I've ever read Charles Dickens, but I didn't think I would ever read Charles Dickens because he's a classic author and it's just not something that I thought I would ever pick up, but I was like, you know, it's Christmas time, I'm gonna pick up A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And it was so worth it. Like, I had such a good time reading this. Some of, I mean, Charles Dickens' writing is really accessible to contemporary readers, which is one of the reasons I enjoyed it so much. And it was also just, it has such a good message that I think should be required reading for people in this day and age. Um, but, I give this five stars, and I will probably do a reread next Christmas, because it was so good. Lastly, I read, and this is the last book I read of the year. This is The Last Year Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. This was excellent. This was, I'm so glad I read this. I'm so glad it was the last book that I finished out the decade with, because it was so gorgeous and so meaningful. So it's about, what is this about? This is about Violet, whose brother tries to commit suicide, and in the hospital after he's tried to commit suicide, or tried to die by suicide, because we don't use that term anymore, um, after he's attempted, she makes some mistakes in the hospital, like flirting with a man who's much older than her, and so her parents send her to Lyric, Maine, it's Maine, um, to live with her uncle, and her, she works in an aquarium. I'm not explaining this well. It's just, it's so good, and there's a female-female romance in here that was just wonderful. This whole book is wonderful. It gave me so many warm, fuzzy feelings, um, and the writing is just stunning, like stunning, um, and I think that Julia Drake is going to be an author to really check out all of the books that she writes in the future. I loved it so much. I'm so glad I read this with the Shakespeare Book Club. The Shakespeare Book Club. Um, and yeah, I'm really just, I really enjoyed this. So that's all the books I read in the month of December. Um, I had a pretty good reading month, I think. Um, I'm hoping that continues on into the new year. Um, I am having a pretty good reading month right now. I've read two books so far. Well, one was a DNF, but that was a very, I'm glad I DNF that. It was not a good book. Um, yeah, I, I read two books so far. They were both pretty good. One was excellent, one was pretty good. Um, and I'm just hoping that this continues for the whole month hoping that I can come to you at the end of January and be like, my reading month was excellent. Um, but we'll see. Um, comment down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought. Um, I'd love to hear from you. But that's all for me for now, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!